Contract EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is five unique builds for five commanders, a new series that I will be doing on my channel that I really probably should have started doing a long time ago. I don't know why I didn't. It fits nicely into what I'm doing on my channel, right? And of course, I have my Underwhelming Commander series, which I talk about those Underwhelming Commanders that are a little difficult to build around. And then I have, you know, my Building Janky Deck series where I talk about playing these really janky interesting you know deck ideas and strategies but i have there, there's a void there that i think needs to be filled which this series will do which is commanders that you know not really underwhelming necessarily maybe some of them are but for the most part they're not underwhelming and they're actually in, in some cases really really popular but let's go a different direction with it right a lot of commanders especially the way they they you know print commanders now it's just super obvious the direction you want to go and that's the direction everyone is going but i'm throwing out other ideas here's some commanders that maybe you already have these decks and you're just looking for something that is a little more interesting to do with them i'm giving you an alternate route to take right instead of going the mainstream route the, the really obvious route i'm giving you a different one to take th that you can build around that that commander that's not very underwhelming it's actually a pretty good commander but doing it in a, in a more interesting way before i get to that though i will just say that once in a while i mean these are the ideas that i come up with and a lot of time i come up with them because i am actually making these decks and torsten that i talked about in the last video i actually went ahead and made that deck so once in a while you know i won't be doing a poll or anything and i won't be putting deck lists for all these but once in a while i will be building these decks and when i do i'll throw them out there maybe in the following video for you guys to check out so the torsten deck i made i i went with not entirely creatures and lands like i said in the video i did put a few cards in there like hunting grounds for example is one that i just think is a, a slam dunk in that deck because you're filling your hands so quickly that you can very easily put those creatures into play and of course because you're in the discard theme i did a lot of the discard stuff that fits with the threshold so you very quickly get the threshold and then as you fill your hand with creatures hunting grounds is just a slam dunk in that deck i think so that deck list is in the description if you are interested getting to the five commanders from this week though rafik of the many one green white and a blue human knight three three has exalted whenever a creature you control attacks alone it gains double strike until end of turn and uh, you know i just did my commanders that used to be really really scary video and i could have very easily put this one on there it is a commander that used to be one of those really terrifying Voltron commanders. And I don't see, I haven't seen this guy in forever. The strategy, you look at this and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to give my commander double strike. And, you know, when the Voltron strategy was a lot more, I guess, viable in the format, that's just the, the, the mentality people had is, oh, well, if I'm going to give any creature double strike, why not have it be my commander? I don't know if anyone has ever made a Rafik of the Many deck that wasn't Voltron. I mean, I've never seen one. And I think he is a great commander for, again, giving other creatures double strike. I talked about this in the Nizan deck, sort of, where I'm like looking for other creatures that I want to be imbuing with those abilities. And I also talked about this in the Quende deck, where I'm like, okay, if I want to give creatures, yeah, double strike's great for damage, sure. But what it's really good for is deal damage triggers, for example. And that's how I want to, want to build this deck. A cold-eyed Selkie for me is an absolute slam dunk in a Rafik of the Many deck. And I would imagine a lot of people never included it in the Rafik of the Many deck because they were too busy doing the Voltron strategy, right? If I have a cold-eyed Selkie in that deck, it attacks alone. And, you know, if it's got the, it's got the island walk, so if my opponent has islands, it's unblockable. It gets the exalted because it's attacking alone. And if I have any other exalted effects in the deck, which of course I probably will, it's going to get an even bigger bump. But let's just pretend I only have my commander out and my cold eyed selkie it attacks it gets the plus one plus one so now it's a two two it deals damage and of course it's got the double strike it draws you cards equal to the amount of damage dealt so when i connect with the first strike damage i draw two cards and when i attack with the normal damage i draw two cards so just rafika the many and cold eyed selkie every time i connect i draw four cards that's incredible right and again that's how i want to build this deck and bad colors particularly and i've had this idea forever because bant colors does the creatures dealing damage thing really really well again solitary visionary another one that i've talked about so many times here's a creature that just with my commander again i attack it's going to be a three three and when i connect i can destroy two enchantments and, and again it's got shadow so it's essentially unblockable just go down the list caustic wasp is another one there's another card that it fits the theme of 
everything I'm doing in this deck where it's hard to block, it's going to get the bump, and, you know, I pick the opponent who has got lots of artifacts, and I get the, the, the double strike trigger works really good with creatures that have those deal damage, can, you know, connecting triggers on them, like a Caustic Wasp, of course, destroys artifacts. So that's how I'm going to build that deck. I'm going to build a Rafika the Many deck that is not doing Voltron at all. It is doing a whole bunch of creatures that want to be connecting with my opponents and getting the deal damage trigger. There's the idea. Run with it if you want to. Next up, Glissa the Trader. And this is one that is not necessarily built around the commander. It's more of an idea, right? So sometimes I'm taking that commander and I'm going in a different direction. Sometimes it's I have a really interesting deck idea and this is the commander that I think fits, although there is possibly some other commanders that fit as well. Of course, Glitzer the Trader, really great commander. Black, green, green, zombie elf, three, three, first strike, death touch. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you may return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. And it's just such a neat commander because you're doing the artifact theme, but in Golgari colors, which is very unique and interesting. And I chose this one because it is fitting the theme of what I'm doing for both of the different tribes that I'm going after here. I'm doing an underwhelming tribe here. That's the the situation I'm, that I'm going after here. But I'm using Glissa because both of these, I don't know if underwhelming tribe is, is the right word, but certainly very rare tribes. Both of them are artifact creature tribes as it happens. And so for that reason, of course, they both fit with Glissa. And I came up with this idea because when I had a Glissa deck a long, long time ago, I had Razor Mane Masticore in the deck. And this is one of the tribes. Masticore, if you're not familiar with it, there's not a lot of them. There's a few. I think there's like five or six. They are all artifact creatures. And what they all have in common is they want you to be discarding on your upkeep, right? Pretty much all of them, I think, want you to be discarding constantly. And the discard theme works really good with Glissa because, of course, you can return things to your hand. I, I know you normally wouldn't think of that, but again, the discard theme works good there because you can constantly be, be refilling your hand by returning stuff. And Razormane Masticore, I just thought was a phenomenal fit in that deck. And if you have a Glissa deck, I think it's a great fit. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it unless you discard a card. So I discard a card, of course, and... Because I'm playing a Glissa deck, I'm going to discard an artifact card that I can very easily get back. So that part is almost not a drawback at all. At the beginning of your draw step, you may have it deal three damage to target creature. So now I'm going to immediately on my draw step, kill an opponent's creature, and then my Glissa triggers, and I immediately get that card back. So it's just a freebie. Not only you get it for five, five first strike creature, pretty good. But on top of that, I get this free kill one of my opponent's creatures on every draw step, I guess. So that was just a neat fit in there. And because of the discard theme fitting very nicely, it fits with what Glissa is doing. And of course the artifact creature theme as well, where if my Razor Mane Masticore goes to the graveyard, now I can very easily get it back. And a lot of the Masticores are very easily killing creatures as well. Argenta Masticore, which just came out. Again, I, I think it's just a slam dunk in a Glissa deck. It's that artifact creature. It's doing the discard thing. And you can destroy permanence with this one, but you can also kill creatures. So, of course, you very easily get that card back that you just discarded. If I have a really expensive artifact in my hand, every upkeep Argenta Masticore is just destroy target creature, right? If I have an eight mana artifact in my hand, it just becomes pick any creature on the battlefield and destroy it. And then that card goes right back to my hand and I can do it again next turn. So the Masticore tribal, that is what I'm going after here, but also, and you can do one or, or more, you can do the Masticore thing with Gliss if you want to, or you can do both because both of these tribes are very, very small. You could very easily fit them both into the deck. Chimeras is the other one. And this is not necessarily just artifact creatures. Um, there are quite a few chimeras in the in the format. They're, they're not really in any particular color, but you could throw a few actual chimeras in the deck. Tree Shaker Chimera is one. That's a chimera. And it's pretty decent. It's green, so it'll fit in your Glissa deck. It's not an artifact creature or nothing. The reason why the artifact creature fits, though, is because of the only sort of tribal aspect that fits with the Chimeras, which is this uh, cycle of cards that came out in Visions, like Lead Belly Chimera, which is a Chimera. And they're all the whole cycle of these cards that are imbuing abilities. Also, putting plus two, plus one, two counters on them, which is kind of funny because you don't see plus two, plus two counters anymore. Sacrifice Lead Belly Chimera. Put a plus two, plus two counter on target Chimera and it gains trample. And that's a permanent effect, right? The trample lasts permanently. So again, if I have my Tree Shaker Chimera out, for example, I can sacrifice that Lead Belly Chimera and imbue it with this ability and give it a... Uh... So now my Tree Shaker Chimera is a 
10-7 Trample has to be blocked when it dies, draw three cards. Pretty great, right? And of course, there's a cycle of these. They give Vigilance, they give Flying, and they give First Strike. I won't go through all of them. And they can put the counters on each other right? You can put the counters on each other because they are chimeras as well, or you can put other chimeras in the deck. You can do a little bit of creature type changing thing, although in, of course, Galgari Colors, there's, there's not a lot of options there for that. Works in this deck because you're sacrificing them. Of course, works with Glissa because I sacrifice my Brass Talon Chimera and it goes to my graveyard, and then I can very easily get it back with my commander, right? That's why I think it's a good fit in Glissa. And you could do both here, or you could do, you know, maybe something else. I had thought to Cassia, Dig Site Mentor, it's a artifact commander that is getting artifacts out of your graveyard. Could also work with the Chimera or with the, you know, the Masticors as well. You could do one or you could do both. That's another commander that works with this theme. So, but I thought Glisten was maybe the best because it gets artifact cards out of your graveyard very easily. Give it a try if you want. Next up, Wart Bogart Anti. And I'm going to talk about three in a row here that are all fitting the same theme. And they are the... Looks like a tribal card, but maybe if we don't do tribal, we can do something a little bit different. And funny enough, this sort of fits with the last, you know, what I talked about with Glissa, except the reverse, where I'm not doing a tribal theme. Now I'm doing a discard theme where it's it's actually not tribal at all. And I mean, obviously you have to do a little bit of tribal here, right? At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target goblin card from your graveyard to your hand. So you have to have those goblins in your graveyard to get back. But what your commander does is essentially turn all your goblins into a squee goblin nabob. And squee is a phenomenal fit. If you're in any deck that is red, that is discarding, squee is a phenomenal fit because again, it's doing exactly what the Glissa is doing. That's why Glissa works good with the discard theme because I discard my squee to some effect doesn't matter what it is right like survival of the fittest is a card that works phenomenally with squee because it squee constantly returns to your hand so you can use it as fodder for your your survival of the fittest every turn the same is true here right your squee is just great in any discard theme because it's always in you return it on your upkeep and it ensures you always have discard fodder for whatever your whatever effect you have and wart bogart anti is doing that effect that squee has with all your goblins right now you can put goblin tribal stuff in here i guess but at the end of the day the discard theme is what you're going to be doing here this is going to be a rakdos discard deck and as i just talked about recently in a video i think rakdos are the actually the best discard colors because they have so much support there right you think about bone miser surly badgesaur there's lots of really good feast of sanity there's so many great cards in Rakdos colors that want us to be discarding, right? Conspiracy theorist. There's a ton. If I'm doing a discard tribal deck, I want it to be in Rakdos colors. And here, even though, again, there doesn't seem like there's anything discard going on here at all. All you have to do is make sure you have some goblins in your deck. That's it. Not even a lot, just a few. So that at the beginning of your upkeep, you're returning a goblin from your graveyard to your hand so that you always have discard fodder in your hand to discard to whatever, you know, just put whatever you want in the deck. Anything that discards cards will work here, obviously. You could do madness. And again, madness is probably best in black and red colors. It's a little bit of a camouflage, right? Where, where it looks like I'm doing a goblin tribal deck and I do have goblins in the deck. I would say probably a dozen is enough just to make sure you have at least one. And then I'm doing a discard theme in Rakdos colors, which Again, Madness works really good, and there's a ton of great discard support in the colors as well. I think that's a neat way to go with this commander. Continuing on, and again, Gargos Vicious Watcher, really popular commander in the format. It was the most popular mono green commander for a while. I don't know if it still is. And, you know, I'm going to call this the Garalf effect or the Garalf syndrome or something. The, the mono blue Garalf, when everyone first saw that commander, they didn't think it was very good because you see zombies you control have flying and everyone thinks it's a zombie tribal deck. And it's automatically, you know, oh, this is not a very good commander because it's, you know, mono blue zombies. That's not great. And we had just gotten uh, Will Halt, which of course is a bonkers Demir zombie tribal commander. So why would I ever use Grelf? Grelf, there's no zombie tribal there at all. The second ability of sacrificing your creatures, that's what you're building around, right? And this happens a lot with commanders now. Ratatrabic is another one where you look at that and you're like, oh, well, zombies have vigilance. I guess I'm doing zombie tribal. No, that's just an added bonus to the last ability, just like with Gorelf. The last ability is what I'm building on. And people did this less with Ratatrabic. There, they didn't make the mistake as much because of course, vigilance isn't that great as a tribal aspect, but the, the last ability is really good. That's what you want to build around. And the, the next two commanders I'm going to talk, again, Wart's sort of like that, but the last two commanders especially. Get out of the tribal 
aspect and then what do we have, right? And when you look at Gargos Vicious Watcher, you see Hydro Spells you cast cost four less to cast. That, of course, I'm doing Hydro Tribal. And you can. I would argue that there are better Hydro Tribal commanders. I, I think there's probably a few. Again, I ones that you don't have to be in mono green. It is really nice to have Hydro Spells cost four less. That's a lot. And you could put a few in here for sure. The ability I want to build around though is this last one. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, Gargos Vicious Watcher fights up to one target creature you don't control. That's anyone that's played against a Gargos deck, it's like, man, and anytime I want a path or swords one of his creatures, I'm gonna end up losing one of mine because his commander is gonna kill one of my creatures. That's what I'm building around. I'm building around that ability. Ignore the Hydra Tribal and just build around that ability. And of course, you can very easily do that by just casting spells that target your creatures. You can do this. This doesn't have to be my opponent is trying to swords my creature. This is whenever creature you control becomes the target of a spell. I mean, you could very easily do a Voltron deck here because of course your commander is an 8-7 with Vigilance. That's pretty good. And I can just cast auras. I can do aura tribal. I did an Asa Aseo Enlightened Bushi deck, which is mono green auras. And I, there's a bunch of stuff in there like Seeds of Growth, right? Or what's that spell that whenever you target your creatures, you get to draw cards. There's already support for that right? So there is a lot of stuff that we can put in this deck that are already doing that. Legolas, which just came, I talked about this with the Legolas, better in the 99 commanders, right? He's doing that, where when you target your, your own creatures with spells, you're getting a benefit. You're actually getting the same, the fight mechanic. You can do the fight thing here, where whenever you fight creatures, you can either use fight effects, where I can cast a fight effect that is targeting my Gargos, and I will get essentially a double fight off of it, and for that reason, the Death Touch Tribal works here as well because Death Touch works really good with the fighting or I can just do the punching. The punching is probably better with your commander because your commander is already doing the fight thing. You don't want to fight a bunch of creatures. You might lose your commander. A punch effect is better because I can punch a creature. That creature is going to die and then trigger my commander and fight another creature. So now I'm, I'm getting a two for one here. Obviously, uh... Livewire Lash is an auto include here because that's doing, you know, the I want to target my creatures with spells because your commander's fighting all the time. And again, this is something that I don't know if people do in their Gargos decks, but they certainly should. And if you're building around that last ability and doing more of a Voltron strategy, the my commander takes damage and puts counters on itself. Cards like that will work here because your commander is constantly taking damage. So anything that your, your commander is taking damage and you're getting a benefit off of that will work here as well. Ignore that Hydra Tribal thing. You you could put a few, sure. And obviously you could do the changeling thing as well because of course changelings are hydras, so you could do that. But I think that second ability is really, really good. It's really good. And if you ignore the Hydra Tribal thing and just build around that last ability, I think you, you could find you'd make a really interesting and really powerful deck with it. And maybe even more so, and, and this is a really interesting one, Rith Liberated Primeval. This came out in Dominaria United last year, and I didn't talk about it at all on my channel, and can't even remember where I saw it, but when I saw it, I had the same thought. Two red, green, and a white, dragon, five, five, flying ward two, other dragons you control have ward two. So again, people see that and they go, this is a dragon tribal deck. This is Naya Dragons. And yeah, maybe you want to do Naya Dragons. Obviously, there is at least five or six or maybe more dragon tribal commanders that are just straight up better than this. Obviously, if you want to play more colors, you know, Naya isn't the best colors for dragon tribal, I don't think. You could, sure. Dragons you control have ward two, that's not bad. However, again, this this even more so is just like Garalf, where people see the dragon tribal thing and think, I got to do dragon tribal here. And they're missing the part where that's last ability is the build around. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature or planeswalker under opponent controlled was dealt excess damage this turn, create a four, four red dragon creature token with flying. That's a great ability. And in my opinion, doesn't at all play into the first ability, right? The, the, the dragon tribal part. And I looked on EDH rec, everyone's doing dragon tribal. How are you getting that trigger? There are a few cards. Terror of the Peaks is a obviously a slam dunk in this deck, no matter what direction you're going, because it can do that. It is a dragon that is going to deal damage and you can get the excess damage trigger. As I say all the time, if I have a commander that at the beginning of end step is triggering to give me something, I want to make sure I'm doing it every turn. Are you doing it every turn? I doubt you are. If you're doing dragon tribal with this, there's no way you are triggering that excess damage thing on every end step just by attacking with your dragons. First of all, dragons have flying. And again, this is a bit of a non-bow here where I have 
have a creature that I actually want to be blocked, right? I want my dragon tokens or dragons that I just have in my deck to be blocked so that I can get the excess damage trigger, but my dragons have flying. So how often is that going to be happening? You can build around that. But again, other than Terror of, of the Peaks and maybe Scourge of Valkus and a- actual dragons that are dealing direct damage, I would put no dragons in this deck at all. I would put... I'm dealing damage. This is a spell slinger theme. That is the really different, interesting direction I can go with this deck is I'm doing a spell slinger theme in Naya Colors. I think that's a really neat way to go, right? Where my opponent has a creature, whatever creature it is, I'm looking for the creature that I can do excess damage to, right? Your, your commander is cranking out four, four dragons every turn. And again, the dragons you are creating, just like with Guelph, where the zombie tokens I'm making get flying off of my commander, the dragons I'm creating off my commander get the ward too. That's where that benefit comes in, right? I got a lightning helix in my hand. I look for a creature that has a two toughness. I zap that creature. I kill it. That's always good. I gain three life. And then on my end step, I've dealt excess damage and I get to create a four, four dragon. That seems pretty fantastic to me, right? So all I have to do is just put a bunch of damage spells in here. I have a roast or something. I look for the creature that I will do excess damage to and I kill it. So I kill my opponent's creature. And on top of that, I get a nice big fat dragon on my end step as well. And of course, that's how I'm closing out the game. I am just sitting there roasting all my opponent's creatures and then creating a dragon army on my end step that of course then I can just go to my opponent's faces with. I don't want to be hoping my opponents block my dragons so that I can create more dragons. I guess if my opponent had a planeswalker, that's the only way that this actually might work. So my opponent has a, a planeswalker with a with a four loyalty on it and I can attack it with my commander and I will, how often is that going to happen, right? I just think that if you go the dragon tribal route, you will, won't be getting that trigger off your commander hardly ever. And I want that trigger. And I think that's a way interesting way to go with it. And you can actually do some spell slinger tribal stuff here, like Firesong and Sunspeaker, for example, work really good in this strategy. Red instants and sorceries, you control have lifelink. I have all those damage spells, right? I can now go down the damage spell theme. And all those cards, which are going to be mostly in red and white, are going to fit in this deck. Rem Corollis is another one that wants me to do, be doing the damage spell slinger theme in red and white. Radiant Scroll Wielder, right? Here's a card that probably doesn't get played a whole lot other than in Fire Song and Sunspeaker decks. Instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink at the beginning of your upkeep. You get to cast a, an instant or sorcery from your graveyard, right? So that's a really neat fit in a Naya spell slinger theme. And of course, without a doubt, the one that is a slam dunk, a card that I've been looking for a great fit for the longest time is Tamanoa. Finally, what a perfect fit for a card like this. Again, we're doing the spell slinger theme in Naya colors. So again, you can do like a gutter snipe, stuff like that. But more importantly, we're doing damage spell slinger theme in Naya colors. And Tamanoa is an absolute slam dunk here. Red, white, and a green spirit two, four. Whenever a non-creature source you control deals damage, you gain that much life. And funny enough, with all the life we're gaining off of our spells, we could even do that a little bit here as well. Non-creature source, of course, means our spells that we are casting. So this card just is a phenomenal fit. Funny enough, it, it works really nicely in this theme. I think this is a great fit. There's a lot of neat cards that you could put in this deck that will fit. We're just zapping our opponent's creatures with damage spells, and then we get a four for dragon on our end step. I think that is a way better build around for Rith than the just straight up dragon tribal theme, right? Again, there are a few dragons that will fit the theme you, that you could throw in here for sure, but I would put in like four or five and that's it. The rest of the deck is a Naya spell slinger theme. I think that's a really, really cool build with this commander. All right, that is it. That is all. Five unique builds for five commanders. Again, these are all, I think pretty much everyone I mentioned today is a pretty popular commander, but I'm going in a completely different, interesting direction with it. Again, if you already have one of these commanders and you're, you're not kind of bored with what you're doing, you have a Rith deck and, you know, Dragon Tribal, it's not really working great with that last ability. I just gave you a really great way to go with it. Maybe you can do it yourself. That is all I'm doing here. I'm just giving you guys interesting ideas to go with with these commanders. Maybe in the next video, I will have built one of these decks. We'll find out in the next episode. That is it for today, though. And thanks for tuning in.